and I welcome members to the ninth meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. We have apologies from Margaret McCulloch. As always, I ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is instrument subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Local Government Finance Scotland Amendment Order 2015 draft, nor on the Public Bodies Joint Working Scotland Act 2015 Consequential Modifications and Savings Order 2015 draft. However, the committee may wish to note that both instruments were withdrawn and relayed to correct errors identified by our legal advisers. Is the committee content with those instruments, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two is instruments subject to negative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the support and assistance of young people leaving care, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, Assisted Side 2015 nor on the provision of water and sewerage services, Reasonable Cost, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 79 nor the Bankruptcy, Miscellaneous Amendments, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 80 nor the Personal Injuries NHS Charges Amounts Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-81. Nor the National Health Service Optical Charges and Payments Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-86. Nor the Public Bodies Joint Working Integration and Joint Board Establishment Scotland Order 2015, SSI 2015-88. Nor the Scottish Roadworks Register Prescribed Fees Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-89. The National Health Service Cross-Border Healthcare Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 and 91. The Reservoirs Panels of Reservoir Engineers, sections under which members may be appointed, Scotland Order 2015, SSI 2015-92. Nor the Waste Recyclate Quality Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-101. And nor on the Professional Standards Authority for Health and Social Care Fees Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-400. However, the com committee may wish to note that SSI 2015 80 makes amendments to the Bankruptcy Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 225, the Bankruptcy Applications and Decisions Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 226, and the Bankruptcy Fees Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 227, in view of the committee's reports on those instruments. The committee may also wish to draw a matter in relation to SSI 2015-91 to the attention of the lead committee for the instrument. The requirements which the regulations transpose for Scotland should have been transposed by the 25th of October 2013, which was the date of the coming into force of the 2013 regulations. No explanation for the delay is provided in the policy note. Are we agreed to draw these matters to the attention of the lead... Sorry, that particular matter to the attention of the lead committee? Yes. Please. Thank you. Is the committee otherwise content with those instruments? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item three is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. The Reservoirs Scotland Act 2011, commencement number three and transitional provisions, order 2015, SSI 2015, 63. The meaning of this instrument could be clearer in the way that section 110.6 of the Reservoirs Scotland Act 2011 is commenced with effect from the 1st of April 2015. The Scottish Government does not intend, with the effect from that date, to commence, in relation to Crown land, the powers of entry exercisable by SEPA for the purpose specified in paragraphs B to K of section 91.2, nor to commence the power of entry mentioned in section 93.1. The Government does intend to commence, with effect from that date in relation to Crown land, the powers of entry for a purpose specified in section 91.1 and to a and L in section of 93.2, so far as it applies where entry is taken for any such Sorry. purpose. Let me just run that again. The Government does intend to commence with effect from that date in relation to Crown land the powers of entry for a purpose specified in section 91.1 and 2A and L and section 93.2, so far as it applies where entry is taken for any such purpose. Thank you for your patience. The schedule to the order could have been more clearly expressed, sorry, could have more clearly expressed those intentions by making provision in column three that section 110.6 of the 200, 2011 Act is commenced for those restricted purposes specified in section 91.1 and 2A and L and section 93.2, so far as it applies where entry is taken for any such purpose. 
This would be clearer, given that section 110.6 expressly refers to all the powers conferred by section 91, whether those specified in that section or the ancillary powers referred to in section 93.1 and 2, but not all these powers are commenced by this order. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the attention of the Parliament to the report on the reporting ground H, as the meaning could be clearer? Agreed. I have a suspicion my inability to read out the explanation rather makes the point. Thank you. Turning now to the Pollution Prevention Control Act 1999, commencement number three, Scotland Order 2015, SSI 2015 74. Subparagraph G123 of Article 22 commences the repeal of certain sections of the Environment Act 1995. Subparagraphs H to L of Article 22 also commence the repeal of certain sections but do not make clear to which act or acts the specified sections belong. <coughs> it is intended that subparagraphs H to L should commence the repeal of further sections of the Environment Act, Environment Act 1995 running on from subparagraph G1 to 3. Subparagraphs H to L are therefore incorrectly numbered and should be numbered G4 to 7, sorry, to 8. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground H as its meaning could be clearer? John. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is quite fundamental. I mean, I, I accept that sometimes we're dealing with fairly minor uh, errors in this committee, but, I mean, if something is G4 to 8, it's quite different from being H to L. I mean, it's just absolutely clear, factual. I, I mean, I happen to like figures, and, and figures are involved in this. So, I mean, it either is one or the other, and, and it's, it's just basically wrong. So, um, while I understand how it happened, I do think uh, we should make a point about it. Does the committee also agree to call on the Scottish Government to correct this error by laying a further instrument? Agreed. Thank you. In this regard, and I think that probably the most elegant way of dealing with this situation is indeed just to lay a new instrument. I'd be grateful if the Government would consider that. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Courts Reform Scotland Act 2014, Commencement Number 2, Transitional and Saving Provisions Order 2015, SSI 2015-77. Nor on the Post-16 Education Scotland Act 2013, Commencement Number 6, Order 2015, SSI 2015-82. Nor on the Act of a Journal Criminal Procedure Rules Amendment, Reporting Restrictions 2015, SSI 2015-84. Nor on the Act of Sederant Rules of the Court of Session and Sheriff Court Rules Rules Amendment Number 3, Reporting Restrictions 2015, SSI 2015-85. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yeah, yes. Okay. Agenda Item 4, the Air Weapons and Licensing Scotland Bill. This item of business is consideration of the Scottish Government's response to the committee's Stage 1 report on this bill. Members have seen the briefing paper and the response from the Scottish Government. The committee may wish to highlight the following matters to the lead committee of the bill. Section 37.1 enables Scottish Ministers to make further provision by regulation for the purposes of Part 1 of the Bill. However, the Committee's report noted that the powers at Sections 41, 61, 72, 13.9, 14.2, 15.1, 17.6 and 18.2 and 4 set out various matters in Part 1 of the Bill which may be prescribed by regulation. The committee did not consider the broad general power of section 37.1 to be necessary and recommended that it be removed by amendment stage 2. The report further recommended that if the government considers that further types of provision need to be specified beyond those already set out in sections 4.1 to 37.2, this could be achieved by bringing forward appropriate amendments. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, the, committee, there are, sorry, the committee's report also commented on section 76 of the bill which confers powers to make ancillary provisions in standalone regulations. Scottish ministers may make incidental, supplementary, consequential, transitional, transitory or saving provision as the ministers consider necessary or expedient for the purposes of or in consequence of or for giving full effect to any provision of the Act or any provision made under it. The committee considered the use of the words or any provision made under it to be unusual and that the government had not provided sufficient justification for this use of additional wording. The committee considered that the scope of the power in section 76 is uncertain in scope and recommended that it be removed by amendment at stage 2. 
The Government's response to the report indicates that it does not intend to accept the Committee's recommendations in relation to the two matters which I've just discussed. Do members have any comments, please? Or are we comfortable simply to draw this to the Government's...? Well, I'm content to draw this to the Government's... Sorry, I think it's to the Lilly Committee, to be fair. Yes, we've but this is a Government response. Um, yeah. At the risk of putting my head in a noose, um, I think the Government's response is quite a reasonable one. Um, and that there will be perhaps a need for broader powers on occasion in terms of a developing situation around air gun licensing. So, anyway, that's all I have to yeah. say. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Um, I, th I, th I think this is broadly an issue of policy. Uh, and it would be entirely proper to draw this attention to the appropriate uh, policy committee to, yeah. for them to consider whether uh, there is a policy need for this. Um, I do feel slightly uncomfortable with it in its present form, but it may well be that when the policy committee looks at it, they conclude otherwise. Okay. I think the general argument is that we're looking at some slightly unusual words, uh, and there's no obvious explanation as to why they should be there. But plainly, that is a matter of policy, and therefore I suggest referring it to the committee is the appropriate thing to do. Colleagues are comfortable with that? That's what we'll do then, please. Um, does the committee have any further comments? Um, or shall we just look at what comes back at stage two, assuming there are any amendments that come to us? A matter for the policy committee. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'm not entirely clear if it's uh, how much of it's policy and how much of it is, uh, because the wording does seem to be quite important and we haven't really had an explanation. So I think the, the point that we might reconsider it after stage two is fine. Okay. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, I think that draws us to the end of the agenda. And so Thank you very much, in which case I close this meeting.